Hi everyone and welcome to NCHC Between the Boards. I'm Greg Ankers. Coming up on tonight's show, we'll look back at all the highlights from the weekend of November 6th and 7th. We'll also take a look back at the grand opening in Omaha as the Mavericks opened up Baxter Arena a couple weeks ago. We got a special look at the new arena coming up a little bit later. And we'll also preview the upcoming games starting tonight, a full slate of NCHC play this weekend. All of that is straight ahead, but we'll start with our spotlight series from this past weekend that featured a top 10 showdown between number six Minnesota Duluth and number eight Omaha in that brand new building in Omaha. For the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs, they entered off of a bye, entering their first league games of the season. Omaha, meanwhile, coming off of a sweep against Western Michigan a week ago, and a crucial series this past weekend for these two clubs is it's the only time these two teams will pair up this season. And this one would have fireworks early, just 24 seconds into the game. Jake Gensel down below the red line. Looks like he's gonna come in for a corner shot, but sends it out for Brian Cooper on the one-timer. Just like that, it's 1-0 Omaha. Later in the first, Frederick Olofsson with a shot from the point. This is not a blast, my friends. It is a trickler that gets by everybody, and Omaha leads it 2-0 after one. In the second period, UMD on the power play, carrying it strong into the zone. Willie Raskob with the shot. Austin Farley follows it up in front with the goal. And just like that, it's 2-1. Later in the second, though, Omaha working a man advantage. Ian Brady going to come up with the initial shot here. It's going to get tipped by Steven Spinner, then off the stick of Austin Ortega. Three players, one goal. It's 3-1 Omaha. In the third, UMD working a power play. Willie Korn with the shot. Kyle Osterberg there for the rebound goal. That makes it a 3-2 game, but late in the third, Duluth with the extra attacker on. Puck gets turned over and flipped ahead. Jake Randolph adds the empty netter as Omaha wins the opener for two the final. At the end of the second period, when we have that five-minute power play, you know we were we were tired too, uh, uh, you know, on the power play, and then give up the two two-on-ones. That was that was the game right there. Playing with the lead, we get a little more comfortable. Um, you know, we don't always like to give up 44 shots, but having goalie having Wendy Nair back there tonight was huge. Uh, so I think just coming off to that hot start is what we need to, especially coming off the weekend that we had, and I think it really got to set the tone for us as a team and put them back on their heels. And Omaha looking for another quick start on Saturday night. Again, just seconds in. Jake Gensel feeding Austin Ortega here, but Kazmir Kaskasuo sliding over, makes the great save to keep it scoreless. Moments later at the other end, Jared Thomas with a wide open net on the backside, but Evan Wenninger, look at the glove save there, worthy of another glance at this one as Wenninger comes sliding over, snatching it just before it crosses the goal line, and it would still remain a 0-0 game. Still in the first, though, Omaha skating shorthanded. Puck bounces out to Justin Parizek on the breakaway, goes backhand, and it's 1-0 Mavs after the first. In the second, Omaha troubles getting it out of their own zone here. Dominic Toninato makes some pay, gets the goal there to tie things up at one apiece. Then in the third, still 1-1, one one, Jake Gensel out front here getting the second effort goal for the Mavs, and that puts the home team back out in front 2-1. to one. Less than a minute later after that, Tanner Lane skating into the zone feeds Frederick Olofsson, and Olofsson with the pop-up, another crazy goal from Olofsson. That one bounces up and in for the goal to make it 3-1. UNO gets the sweep, winning 4-2. Straight ahead on the program, Western Michigan has a chance to make a statement early in NCHC play. The battle for the gold pan returns and old WCHA foes collide on the ice. That's next on NCHC Between the Boards. Welcome back. Western Michigan had an opportunity to make an early season statement in the NCHC this past weekend as they've started off in league play 2-0, facing a Miami Redhawks club this past weekend on the road. A Redhawks team that has struggled to score goals early this season, having scored just one in their weekend series at St. Cloud just a week ago. And Western Michigan would get off to a strong start in this one. Griffin Molino feeding Paul Stojkovic in the circle. That one trickles in. 
for a 1-0 Broncos advantage. Miami would respond though just a couple minutes later on the power play. And it's going to be Louis Belpedio with the nice cross ice feed to who else? Jack Roslovic beats the goaltender there to tie things up at one goal apiece. In the second then, Miami looking for the go ahead goal. And it's going to be a long pass ahead to Anthony Lewis who works brilliantly with Andrew Schmidt and Josh Melnick who finishes. Take another look at this one. Lewis to Schmidt and Melnick combining for the goal there as Miami takes the opener, winning it on Friday night 2-1 is the final. On Saturday night then, Miami looking for an opportunity to get a sweep in the second of a scoreless game. Jack Roslovic with the shot from the blue line. Alex Gasek with a rebound opportunity. It's still scoreless. Later in the second, though, Alex Gasek on the keeper here into the zone. Puts Miami out in front one to nothing. Three minutes after that, though, Western Michigan comes back. Sheldon Dries picks off the pass at the, at the red line, carries it in, shoots and scores to tie things up at one goal apiece. In the third, though, off the faceoff, starting a power play. Anthony Lewis going to wind and fire, and his power play goal is the difference. Miami wins back-to-back -back nights 2-1 to one, and gets the sweep on home ice. It's part of, part of the game. It's part of the process. Uh, you have to be good in special teams. And um, I thought our penalty killers uh, did a nice job all weekend long, and our power play uh, uh, scored a couple of big goals. In other league action, the battle for the gold pan returns between Colorado College and Denver. The Pioneers won the gold pan a year ago, and a player to watch entering this past weekend series is sophomore forward Danton Heinen, who has scored nine points in four career games against the Tigers. And the sophomore forward would have an impact in the game on Friday night. We'll get to him in just a minute, but first in the first, trailing one to nothing, Cole McCaskill brings it into the zone, leaves it for Luke Gertis and the nice goal to tie things up at one apiece. In the second, here comes Heinen's opportunity from the circle, just sneaking this one in. Gives the Pioneers a 2-1 advantage. Later in the period, CC trying to get the equalizer once again. Cody Bradley with the shot, Evan Cowley with the nasty glove save. Later in the period, it's Trevor Moore getting his first goal of the season. Finally off the Schneid, DU leads it 4-1 after two. In the third though, back comes CC. The nice cross ice feed there finds Trey Bradley to make it 4-3, but Denver wins 5-3 on Friday night. Evan Cowley with two great saves when it was 2-1. That just kept the momentum alive and then we, we popped through with that third and fourth goal, which gave us a little breathing room. I thought offensively we, we played really well until the third. I thought the third we tried to get too cute and we turned too many pucks over and they started coming back at us. I was impressed with uh, you know the, their um, stick to itiveness. They, they were really good. On Saturday, the series shifts to Colorado Springs in the second scoreless game, and Troy Terry making all the right moves here, splitting defenders, beats the goaltender. It's one nothing Pioneers in the third. Still one nothing Denver off the faceoff. Andrew Farney with the shot. Cody Bradley follows it up for the goal. Take another look. Bradley, make no mistake, that ties things up at one goal apiece. Later in the period, though, Nolan Zajac to Matt Marsanu for the one-timer. That's your game winner as Denver wins it, gets the sweep and the gold pan. 3-1 is the final on Saturday. And it was a flashback to WCHA days in Grand Forks last weekend as Wisconsin made the trip to take on North Dakota. UND started off the season with seven of eight games on the road, finally back on home ice. They were road warriors, though, over the first month of the season, off to their best start since 1999. And North Dakota looking to keep its early season unbeaten streak alive would get off to a good start. Luke Johnson carries into the zone, shoots and scores for a 1-0 UND lead in the first. But Wisconsin came to play, especially on Friday night. Aiden Cavallini with the wraparound attempt gets denied, but Corbin McGuire there to punch it in and tie things up at one goal apiece. Then in the second, watch the puck movement here by Wisconsin, finding Luke Coonan on the backside for the easy goal, and it's 2-1 Badgers. Later in the period, Adam Rockwood with a nice feed here, finding Jed Soloway on the centering feed. Wisconsin goes on to win on Friday night 
by the final score of 3-1. On Saturday night then, following their first loss of the season, UND would again strike first in the first. Christian Wolanin sending one towards the net. That one gets by everybody, and UND once again leads it 1-0. In the second, though, Wisconsin has the answer. Watch this work by Rockwood, centering it to Grant Bessie out in front, and it's tied up at one goal apiece. In the third, same score. Nice play here by Johnny Simonson on the wall, pokes it out front to Shane Gersich, and UND regains the lead at 2-1. to one. Then later in the period, looking to put it away, puck comes out to Nick Schmaltz, working a two-on-one with Drake Kajula, and Kajula finishes with the goal there to make it 3-1 North Dakota, salvaging the split on home ice. We just said keep getting pucks to the net, keep getting bodies to the net, and, and good things will happen. It's, you know, we've been doing a good job so far this game, and it's he's bound to crack at some point. And uh, you know, Kirsch just got a goal there, and then uh, Schmaltz made a good play to me. So it's just it took us about 35 shots to crack him, but uh, that's what you need sometimes. And it's time once again to check in on our NCHC Players of the Week for their individual performances this past weekend. Offensive honors go to junior forward Jake Gensel from Omaha, who leads the NCHC in points. He had five in that sweep over Minnesota Duluth with two goals and three assists. For the second week in a row, defensive honors go to junior defenseman Will Butcher from Denver, who notched a goal and three assists in that sweep over Colorado College. He also had a plus six rating over those two games. Rookie honors go to freshman goaltender Evan Wenninger from Omaha. First time this season he played back-to-back -back games in net for the Mavericks, made 45 saves on Friday, followed by 35 saves on Saturday. Wenninger is now 5-1-0 on the season. And overall, goaltender honors go to senior netminder Ryan McKay from Miami, who stopped 42 of 44 shots in a sweep against Western Michigan. Capped the weekend with a 9.55 save percentage and a 1.00 goals against average. There are four teams in the top 10 from the NCHC in both national polls this week. In the USCHO.com poll, North Dakota slides from number one to number three following their split against Wisconsin. Denver, Omaha, and St. Cloud State also cracked the top 10. Minnesota Duluth checks in at 13, while Miami is up to number 17 this week. In the USA Today poll, looks similar. North Dakota at number four, Omaha seven, then it's St. Cloud State and Denver checking in at nine and 10, and Minnesota Duluth is 13th in that poll as well. And it's been quite a first couple weeks of league action. Every team has had at least one series in league play as we check in on the standings. Six teams are tied across the top with six points. Minnesota Duluth and CC still looking for their first wins in league play, and it does include three unbeaten teams so far with Denver, North Dakota, and St. Cloud State right at the top along with the others. Coming up next, we'll recap a grand opening of Baxter Arena. That's next on NCHC Between the Boards. Welcome back. A couple weeks ago was a very memorable weekend for Omaha fans, one they certainly won't soon forget as the Mavericks opened up their brand new on-campus arena for the first time. And to kick it off, Omaha opened with a pair of wins over Air Force. Here's a look back at uh, a very special weekend for Mavericks fans. The home opener is one of those days that hockey fans circle on the calendar. Omaha hockey fans had this one circled 18 months ago. Couldn't be more excited. Um, days uh, just a few days away now. Finally, uh, kind of get the nod and get the ball and run with it. So um, it's been, uh, like I said, two years in the making. A lot of hard work and preparation, and um, we're going to see how it all plays out now. The Mavericks debuted at Baxter Arena on October 23rd, a number one ranking in tow as they hosted Air Force. To call it a milestone night for the program is an understatement. In their 19th season, the Mavericks finally got the chance to play on campus. Before that, home was one of two city-owned arenas, and practice was seemingly here, there, and everywhere across Omaha. I've been back and forth and coming over through the construction, but the players uh, kind of refused to come over as a team. They wanted to, to come into the building and, and skate right away. They didn't want to look around, uh, just because, you know, Ralston's been a, a good place for us. Uh, CenturyLink Center was a good place for us, but it wasn't our home. I remember playing with the Lancers. They, uh, they were t there was talk all around UNO about all oh, this new arena is actually a real thing. Like, and uh, so I heard that, and I was just got so excited, and 
just wanted to make sure I prepared for this moment and be able to uh, help the team out and get to this spot. So we're, uh, it's a great day for UNO hockey. Before the game, there was plenty of pomp and circumstance. Those who helped bring hockey to UNO were recognized. So too were the guys who first pulled on the sweater back in 1997. And there was a nod to where the program has been and where it could go again. The honor of the game and the building's first goal went to a freshman. Cycled along for David Pope. He skates across and now throws Cooper. Top of the slot will give off for Mester. Funnel toward the goal. Score! Steven Spinner has the first goal in Baxter Arena history. It's also his first. And for a production this grand, the Mavericks delivered a perfectly scripted ending. It goes now. Handed up high. Good anticipation. Here's Steven Spinner. He's got great speed around Boji. Spinner bearing in a little back hitter. Score! Second goal of the game for Steven Spinner. And the Mavericks lead back to three inches. Fans brought one. their passion for the home team, and they created the atmosphere in Baxter Arena. It was a fact not lost on the Mavericks. Oh, we love it. I mean, that was, that was awesome tonight. <laughs> that was a pretty cool experience. And uh, just knowing that that's our home arena, we get to try to do that again tomorrow. It's, it doesn't get better, so we're really looking forward to it. When we got out on the ice, I mean, it wasn't really nervous energy. I don't think it was just excitement. I mean, there was a ton of anticipation uh, surrounding this game for a long time, a lot of buildup. And when we got out there, we were ready. I mean, we've been preparing for that moment um, for a long time, years. So, I mean, when we got out there, uh, we knew what we had to do, and it was just really exciting to see that Omaha was excited as we were. Home at last, in a building that will be the repository for Omaha hockey memories for years to come. Coming up next, he's a multi-talented player for St. Cloud State. We talk about junior Ben Storm next as you watch NCHC Between the Boards. Welcome back. St. Cloud State junior Ben Storm is the definition of a two-way player. Playing both defenseman and forward last season, he's hoping to make an impact up front this year as a forward, scoring his first goal up front just a couple weeks ago. Here's more on this junior Colorado Avalanche draft pick from the Huskies. Ben Storm began his collegiate career playing defense for the Huskies, but last season he began a transition back to the position he had been playing for most of his life. I just worked, kind of worked myself into playing forward last year. Uh, I think we had some injuries or coach just needed someone to play forward one game and he figured he'd throw me up there and um, I was fine playing defense. I mean, it's, it was, you know, it's a challenge for sure. Well, we could see in practice, he was much more comfortable on the attack. He was much more comfortable trying to get up ice than he was uh, in a defending role. He's good at getting the puck to the net and stuff, so I mean, he's a good player to play with and he's going to get, get you opportunities if you play with him. He's also um, just a, he's a big target to pass to as well and that's beneficial moving out of the zone where, you know, who's open? Well, you, you can't miss him, so if he's open, you'll find him. Down low, you know, he's a big, strong kid. He's got real good hands. He can shoot a puck. There's a lot of things he can bring to the table uh, from a hockey player but then you add the size in there, it, it's, it's a dangerous combination. Just playing with a guy that big, he's like a foot taller than me. I played with him a little bit last weekend and uh, it's fun. He's smart, he's intense. You know, it's just more natural for me. It's, it's a lot of fun uh, just going in, working in the corners and, and trying to score goals. You know, it doesn't come very often for me, but uh, when I do, I get pretty excited. I love his emotion on the ice and especially when he, he scores a goal, he gets the guys on the bench fired up and you know, when we see him hooting and hollering, it gets us excited. Whether we win or lose, um, I, I love, <laughs> it's just an emotional game for me, and I, it, obviously a lot of people can see that when I score, so. <laughs> Still ahead, we've got a Spotlight Series preview to get to, and a look at all the other upcoming games that are on tap for this weekend, starting tonight. We're back with more right after this. Our Spotlight Series next week shines on Duluth as the UMD Bulldogs, ranked 13th in the country, play host to number 8 Denver. The Pioneers looking to stay hot, coming off of their sweep over CC last weekend, while the Bulldogs are looking to bounce back after getting swept 
against Omaha. They've got certainly again probably one of the best forwards in the league in Heinen, another one in Moore, um, a very mobile decor that's very active. We, we need to get after their D, we need to make it hard, we need to finish checks. Um, I think we can win some of the puck battles down low and, and, and create some things, but uh, you know they're, they're certainly a team that's uh, got some real difference makers. Should be a great series in that one as those two top 15 teams square off in Duluth. Other games coming up this weekend, all NCHC action starting tonight. It's number 17 Miami at number 3 North Dakota. And if you're looking for a couple good freshmen to watch in this one, a pair of first round NHL draft picks are going head to head between Miami's Jack Roslovic and North Dakota's Brock Besser. That should be a fun showdown to watch in uh, Ralph Engelstead Arena this weekend. Elsewhere, it's number nine, St. Cloud State at Western Michigan. St. Cloud State coming off of a bye this week, but with strong goaltending led by Charlie Lindgren. He will not make it easy for the Broncos to score this weekend, and Western Michigan did notch just two goals in their series against Miami last weekend. Could be a defensive showdown in Kalamazoo this weekend. That's going to do it for now. Enjoy the games this weekend, everybody. We'll see you right back here next week on NCHC Between the Borders.